Now, the next chart, though, is one that really catches my attention. And candidly, I don't have a great explanation for it because I have never seen it before. Right. And this is actually the frequency of these types of dynamics. So if you look at the VIX up, S&P up, we're highlighting that with the blue line. That's aberrant. That's unusual. That's not something that we should expect to see. VIX down, SPX down, same thing. Right. Remember, that relationship is negatively correlated. And so what we're highlighting here is the frequency with which basically weird things are happening. Right. Um, and I, I think this chart is somewhat self-explanatory. There's just a lot of weird stuff happening. Um, part of that is being driven by the VIX coming down off of relative highs. But part of it, I think, is also being driven by the de-emphasis on the VIX itself. It's just increasingly less traded. It is less relevant to the overall picture. Um, I think that may change over time. But Craig, do you want to add anything else in here in terms of like what you think some of the mechanics might be behind this? Yeah, so I mean, you can see on here that I actually um, put a line when we when the CBOE started to introduce um, Tuesday and Thursday expirations for zero DT auctions, and um, you know when yeah, we look at that line is not that yeah, the line is not nearly clear enough, but it, you can actually see it in basically the last year, right? So it was introduced in twenty twenty two. I'll, I'll make sure to share this on uh, on our Twitter or something today so you can see it a little bit more Perfect. clear. But, um, you know, I, I think once once those options opened up as tradable instruments, people did tend to move away from the VIX and those longer dated hedges because they can more tactically enter um, hedges around certain risk events like CPI or the Fed. So they don't have to have this big, um, you know, like 30 day hedge on their on their exposure. They can jump in and really focus on whatever events matter. And after that, dump off some of their hedges just to you know save premiums and time decay. Yeah, I think that's I think that's right. That's it's important that you put that line there because I do think that this really is the key story here. And so when we start talking about the VIX being very low, it's a little bit like saying, you know, well, the price of whale oil is relatively low, right? It's it's increasingly irrelevant to the discussion. Again, we don't have enough history to know whether that's a permanent change or whether this is going to be be a phenomenon that we'll look back in hindsight and be like, oh man, how could we have missed this opportunity? But it's absolutely influencing the behavior that I'm engaged in. I'm increasingly focused on longer dated hedges, longer dated exposures, in part because I want to pick up, you know, this. it's a little bit like thinking about interest rates. When interest rates are really high, you have to evaluate the inversion of the curve. It's super attractive right now to lend on a short-term basis not particularly attractive, at least on a relative basis, to think, okay, I'm going to lock in 30-year paper at 4%. But the flip side of that is if you think it's going to change relatively soon, if you think interest rates are going to be cut, you're going to lose those reinvestment opportunities to invest at the front end, and you're going to lock in the, those higher rates by investing in a longer-term vehicle. This is pushing me to think about longer term hedges for a variety of reasons. I actually was just having a discussion with my partner, Harley Bassman, about exactly this dynamic, that longer dated hedges are starting to look relatively more attractive versus the shorter dated hedges. Not just starting, actually, I would argue significantly more attractive. Um, the other thing that I would just highlight is, is that a lot of this dynamic that we're talking about, this selling of volatility, has led to a lot of strategies that are really strong on a year-to-day basis and candidly, you know, maybe much more stable than they've been historically. You know, at Simplify, we have products that are involved in volatility selling, purchasing various forms of hedges. And when I look at these types of charts, I, I, I can't help but think that some of the components and characteristics of the markets have been permanently changed by that red line that Craig so casually drew there.